Welcome to the next generation of capture cards. What an exciting time it is to be a gaming content creator right now. We've had 4K 120 Hertz and variable refresh rate TVs and monitors for the past couple years. And until recently, there hasn't been any hardware on the market for us to be able to record and stream our gameplay using HDMI 2.1 technology. But that's all changed with Avermedia's latest capture card release, the Live Gamer Ultra 2.1. If we check out what we get in the box with this capture card, you're gonna find a USB-C to USB-C 3.2 super speed cable. You'll also get an HDMI 2.1 cable, as you can see from the 8K signage on the end of the cable. In addition to that, you'll get a 3.5 millimeter audio cable. And of course, you have your Live Gamer Ultra 2.1 capture card. This capture card has a starting price of $300. The card weighs 115 grams and fits right in the palm of my hand. The max resolution you can play your games in using this device is 1080p at 360 hertz, 2K at 240 hertz and 4K at 144 hertz, all supporting HDR and a variable refresh rate. The max resolutions you can record your gameplay in are 1080p at 240 FPS, 2K at 120 FPS, and 4K at 60 FPS. Next, if we look at the device itself, starting on the front, you're gonna see a light bar that does illuminate in the whole spectrum of RGB colors, which can be controlled with software, which we'll show how to do in just a moment. On the back of the device is where you'll find all of the capture cards input and output slots, starting with the USB-C input, the HDMI out and in ports. You have a headphone slot to listen to your game audio along with sending the headset's microphone to the capture card for commentary. And next to that, you have your line in port. The setup for this capture card is just like you would expect with any other capture card. Evermedia provides a very easy to follow guide for where to connect each of the cables. Keep in mind, you must use a second HDMI 2.1 cable if you're trying to play in any of the HDMI 2.1 resolutions. For recording game and chat audio off the PlayStation 5, you can use the Elgato Chatlink Pro cable connected to the line in port. Now to add this source into OBS, go to one of your scenes and on the right side where you see sources, you're gonna wanna select the plus button and select a video capture device source. From here within the device dropdown, you just wanna make sure that you have Live Gamer Ultra 2.1 video selected. You should see your video picture pop up on screen. And then if you scroll down just a little bit, you're gonna see that right now we're on the device default settings, but we can actually switch this to custom to be able to have a little bit more control over our resolution and FPS value. Whatever resolution you choose, your monitor has to be able to support that resolution. My BenQ EX3210U monitor does support a 4K output, so that allows me to choose any resolution within this drop down up to 4K. Next, you can choose your FPS value within the recording limits that were mentioned earlier in this video. All the other settings below, you can actually keep default. If you're using stream apps such as Streamlabs Desktop or Prism Live Studio, this capture card can be added exactly the same way, pulling in your gameplay picture along with its audio. Depending on the computer you have will determine how far you're able to take these resolution settings. Evermedia recommends a minimum baseline of a Windows 10 or 11 computer with at least an Intel i5 and GTX 1050 Ti or above. If you wanna do 4K 60 recordings, you're gonna need a lot more power than that minimum spec. Realistically, you're gonna need a 30 series or 40 series graphics card or comparable to be able to do that. For my Mac OS users, we don't currently have full support for this capture card, though from my test using my M1 MacBook Pro, everything functioned pretty normal with the exception of not being able to record higher frame rate videos and the occasional crash. Luckily, by the end of 2023, these issues should all be resolved with the capture cards update. Now, one thing I always iterate to you guys is to not play off the game preview, whether that's an OBS or any other streaming application that you might be using. That's because there's just a slight bit of latency between your game and the preview. It's not much as you can see on screen, but it's a little bit. I timed it out to be just under 5 60th of a second. This is a delay that's been on all capture cards. There are no devices with a real time preview. We aren't there yet. Either way, my gaming experience felt absolutely normal. Confirmed that one. Tag secure. Kill confirmed. Chasing 
Okay, so that was a little look at the gameplay recording quality you can expect when using this capture card. But next, let's take a look at their utility application to get even further control with this device. If you navigate to the product page for this capture card, you can select the download tab and then select the utility tab within the download section. And this is where you can get the Avermedia gaming utility software. Under current information, this is where you're gonna see how the capture card is being used. Under that, we have our device audio settings. So where it's says device audio status, this is how I can see how the audio is coming into the capture card. So right now it's coming in via HDMI and I'm listening to the game audio coming out of the headset port. Now if I plug in the line in or chat link cable, that audio will automatically switch from HDMI to the line in. On the right of that, this is where you can control the audio volume of your game, headset, and microphone of the headset. Under that, you're gonna find the HDCP section. You're gonna wanna keep this all default or only set to what your console is here. Now jumping over to the RGB control section, this is where you can choose among several different lighting effects to change what your light bar looks like on the capture card. You can even set custom colors and adjust the speed and brightness of the animation, which is a nice little touch. Jumping to the settings tab, this is where you can make updates to the capture card's firmware. I think for me, after two weeks of using this capture card, I gotta say it is an absolute beast of a device. It's definitely the best capture card that I own at this moment in time. I would say this is for anyone that owns a 4K 120 hertz display monitor or TV with a variable refresh rate, and you own a PS5 or Xbox Series X console, and you find yourself typically playing your games in 4K at 120 hertz, and you wanna record and stream your content. This capture card can also be used for those of you who are running a dual PC setup, playing your games on an HDMI 2.1 display. Though Avermedia is is releasing an internal capture card that you can check out for PC, which might suit you guys better. I would also say that this capture card would not be for you if you're planning on playing your games in a lower resolution and frame rate for the foreseeable future. You'll be much better off picking up the Avermedia Live Gamer Extreme 3, the EVGA XR1 Pro, or Elgato HE60X capture cards for a much cheaper price. If you were someone hoping that you could elevate your stream quality with this capture card, that won't really accomplish that because on YouTube, Twitch, Kick, Facebook, streaming in 120 FPS or higher isn't even an option. They should allow that for gaming content creators, but something I hope comes in the future to make these capture cards more worth their while. So yeah, I think if you do pick up this capture card, you are future-proofing your console and PC gaming and streaming setup in a lot of ways. I put an affiliate link in the description below. If you do wanna pick up this capture card, it does help out the channel at no additional cost to you. And the last thing I'll say is, Elgato, it's your turn.